You, finding life rather dull, dreaming again of exotic places, wishing you were somewhere else, we offer you Escape. Escape with us now to a placid English village and the company of an equally placid little man who one day shook the world, as H.G. Wells told it in his delightful story, The Man Who Could Work Miracles. Now... I might say right in the beginning that I ain't the kind of chap who has a naturally argumentative disposition. Oh no, quite the contrary. I'm a reasonable man who always takes proper thought before he speaks. I'm one who has a due respect for scientific truth. Why, I ain't never opened my mouth to utter a word that wasn't a pure, undiluted fact. That's what you say. Howsoever... When a man of inferior intellect, such as Toddy Bemis has showed himself to be more than once, when a man like that insists upon airing his ridiculous opinions in a public place such as the Long Dragon Bar, then I've got no choice but to confound him with the superior knowledge which I possess. So you say. That's right, so I say. And if you can't contribute nothing but the same three words to this discussion, I'll thank you to admit you're defeated and shut your mouth. Well, now, Mr. Fulthingay. Easy, lads, easy does it. Well, I ask you, Constable. I'm only trying to enlighten the man from the bog of ignorance he's a floundering in, and he keeps coming up with his infernal, so you say. Well... I'm a-wasting me words, that's all. If pints of half and half flowed across this bar the way words do, then I'd have retired years ago. <laughs> hey, speaking of half and half, I'll have another of the same if you don't mind, Miss Bridges. Quite you are, Constable By Winch. all rights, Toddy Beamish, I shouldn't be wasting my time on you. But out of the goodness of my heart, I'll do it anyhow. Suit yourself. Hmm. Now, let's take, for example, that pint of hail that you're holding in your hand. It's pretty nigh empty. <laughs> well, now... Supposing, for instance, if that hail was to turn into wine. I never cared much for wine. Always like ale, Betty. <laughs> now, if that hail was to turn into wine, then you'd have a miracle. So you say. So anybody says. Or, or, or take that master padlock on Miss Bridges' cash box. Now, if anyone could open that without a proper key, that'd be a ruddy miracle. You keep the ro long dragon out of this. Well, perhaps you ain't even aware of the proper definition of what a miracle is, her uh, Mr. Beamish. Well, some is one kind and some is another, in a manner of speaking. If anybody left so much as tuppence on the bars a tip, that'd be a miracle, all right. Well, be that as it may... But a miracle ain't of one kind or another, oh no. A true miracle is something contrariwise to the course of nature, done by the power of will. Something what couldn't happen without being specially willed to happen. And miracles ain't possible. That is a lot, is you know. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say they ain't. It's your ignorance that's talking. Now, look, you see that lamp sitting there on the end of the bar, burning as bright as you please? I see it right in there. Well, now, that lamp in the natural course of nature couldn't burn like that if it was turned upside down and hanging in the hair. You say it couldn't. Mr Beamish, do you mean to tell me... All that... right, all right, maybe it couldn't. And if it did, that would be a miracle. Very well. Now, supposing somebody was to come along, that take me, for instance, and he pointed his finger at that lamp like this and said, Turn upside down. <laughs> now, if the... Oh, Nanny, oh, Nanny, no. there without no visible uh, means of support. Oh, I can't keep it up there much longer. Uh, remarkable, it's highly remarkable. Uh, stop it now, Mr. Father and Gage. Stop it immediately. That's my official order. Well, look out, Constable. Look out. There uh, it goes. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. oh, now see what you've done, Mr. Father and Gage. My best lamb chimney, clean no more than an hour ago, smashed to smithereens. But I, I didn't try to do it. Oh, you know, you might have caught the place afire. Most irregular. And illegal besides, like as not. 
No more of it now. Do you understand? But I told you I didn't mean for you it to... You and your silly conjuring tricks. Well, all I done was to point my finger at it like that... There, and stop I... it now. Don't you dare. Well, that's all I done. In that case, Mr. Fothingay, you defeat your own argument right out of your own mouth. And how is that, might I ask? If it weren't caused by some form of trickery, then what happened to that lamp was a miracle. Now then, I ain't to hold him with no blooming miracles. Held with him or not, as the case may be, Mr. Fothingay. But you just stood right there and performed a real, true, honest, genuine miracle. <laughs> It weren't a matter of being asked to leave the Long Dragon, you understand. I'd already had me mind set on going anyhow. A place what's full of ignorant superstition ain't the kind of place for a man of rational intellect to be doing his thinking in. And thinking was just what was called for. On the one hand, I wasn't ready to swallow no miracle theory. But, on the other hand, I wasn't able to recollect no scientific principle that might account for that which had occurred. As you might say, the question had dissolved itself into a uh, dilemma. Well, me landlady, Mrs Tetherington, was sitting up in the parlour when I come in. Good evening, Mr Fotheringay. But I can't recall saying anything to her. Very well, Mr Fotheringay. I went straight to me own room, closed me door and lit the candle. Then I sat on the edge of my bed, a grappling with the problem in a heroic fashion and trying to puzzle out the ultimate solution. Well, now, that wasn't no easy thing to do. It couldn't have happened, but it had happened. Which ain't logic, no matter how you look at it. Why, it'd be the same situation if I was to point my finger at that candle there and say, be raised up in the air. <laughs> hey, blimey. Hanging there like a blooming firefly. But it's contrary. Whoop, there it goes. No, oh, now, that clap as you're at. Oh, dear, now, where in the tarnation did that confounded thing get to? Eh. Well, at any rate, there should be some matches around here somewhere. Oh, here. Yeah. Maybe I could... Yes. Let there be a match in me, hand. <laughs> well, now, just like that... Oh, that safety match. Not a blooming good that's going. No! Oh! oh dear, uh, half a Mona. Uh, maybe I don't need a match. Maybe I could. Yeah. Candle, wherever you are, be lighted. <laughs> Here now, not in the middle of my bed. None of that now. Well, open it up. It isn't locked. Mr. Fotheringay, might I inquire what's going on up here? Can't you recognise a man who's got his hands full of troubles? Mr. Fotheringay, why is smoke coming out of that bed? Because it caught on fire, that's why. A uh, wall comforter with oil burns in it. Taking lighted candles to bed with you, indeed. I'm not taking no candles nowhere, and I'll thank you to leave me the privacy of my own bedchamber. You've been drinking. On the contrary, I've been cogitating upon matters of science, which is far beyond the range of your feeble uh, intellect. Well... Mrs Tetherington, I might remind you that good steady rumours such as a man like myself ain't so easy to come by nowadays, with which I will bid you a highly a respectful a good a night. Well... <laughs> well, old vulture... Don't know who she's talking to. Me. A bloke what's only got to point his finger and say, B? And it is. Oh, blimey. If I ain't suddenly got the power to perform miracles. Real, genuine miracles. <laughs> Escape, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, returns in just a moment. And now, back to Escape. Well, next evening after work, I went walking down the lane that leads around Millsdale's Pond, attempting to put me mental processes into order, as you might say. 
Mostly, I kept trying to cogitate on some honest to Betsy miracle that I might up and perform. But it ain't such an easy matter for a chap who's unaccustomed to goings on of that nature. No, what I wanted was the genuine article. You understand, no, no little shenanigans, but one to make people stop and say, Blimey now, if that ain't a real downright miracle for you. But then, all of a sudden, I had it. I just happened to recollect a chap somewheres who stuck his staff in the ground and commanded it to blossom. So, I poked my walking stick into the edge of the turf, I backed off a wee bit, and I pointed my finger at it and said, Walking stick, become a blooming bush of flowering posies. <laughs> Roses, by heaven. I done it, just like that fellow in the opera. Now then, what's all this here? Oh, Constable Winch, confound that man anyhow. Cease and desist, whatever it is, in the name of the law. Uh, yeah, you, you there, Rosebush, go back now, fast. <laughs> oh, well, have a mind there, who it is you're throwing bramble bushes at. It... There. Oh, confounded, blundering idiot. <laughs> Who's conducting nefarious activities under the cover of darkness, assaulting an officer and gauging the pursuit of his natural... Well, so it's you, Mr. Fotheringay. The fact, being self-evident, Mr. Winch, I will not bother myself to answer. So you'll not bother yourself to answer, eh? And maybe you'll also deny that you just threw a great heavy mass of foliage at me? I do deny it. Then no doubt it just up and flew through the air, all by itself. A Constable Winch, you have just hit the ruddy nail right on the head. Uh, oh, some more of them blasted anky pan conjuring tricks of yours. Is that it? On the contrary, it was merely a small miracle. You don't say so. In which case, his honour might enjoy hearing you tell about it. So come along. I'll do nothing of the sort. Oh, oh resist you, <laughs> officer. That'll be another charge against oh, you. Charge, indeed. <laughs> Mr Winch, you can take your charges and, and go to Hades. Hey, hey, um, Constable. Mr Winch! Oh, blimey, if you ain't gone and disappeared complete like. Now, I wonder if he... Hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking this miracle business is a bit touchy. Why, a man might find himself in a whole peck of trouble before he learns the knack of the thing. Oh, I'd better go and get myself some real professional advice right away. <laughs> Good evening to you, friend. A very pleasant evening to you. <laughs> and the same to you as many of them, Mr. Maitig. Uh, that is, uh, your reverendship. Oh, no, no, no formality now. None at all. You just call me Mr. Maitig. Oh, well, now, thank you kindly, your uh, uh, Maitigship. Won't you step inside? Uh, I'm much obliged to you, Mr. Reverendship. Uh, this way, Mr. Uh, I can't say that I caught the name. A Fotheringay. A George, a W, a Fotheringay. Oh, yes, yes. Not from my parish. Well, uh, yes, yes, I attended services <coughs> last Christmas. Indeed. So many people did last Christmas. Well, here we are, Mr. Fothering Bay. Uh, take a chair. Uh, it's uh, a fothering again. Oh, no, 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 not, not that one. I mean, it, it, it's we. I've often thought of doing something about it uh, sometime. Yes, yes, that one's fine. Well, uh, if you remind me before I leave, Mr. Mayship, and I'll put that little piece of furniture to rights for you. Oh, then you're a carpenter. Well, only in a manner of speaking, as you might say. Mm, well, now, uh, Mr. Motheringsay, feel entirely free to lay your burdens upon my shoulders. Uh, well, the fact is, uh, the matter which I come here to talk about might be considered of a somewhat... Uh, a delicate nature. Oh, think nothing of it. 
please feel free to speak uh, uh, will uh, freely. My housekeeper retires very early. Oh, oh no, your reverendship, nothing like that. Well, then, uh, like, like, I like what? Uh, well, the subject about which I'm inquiring is miracles. Oh, miracles, yes, yes, indeed. Miracles. Uh, any special kind of miracles? Oh yes, the kind which I performs myself. I see. And what sort of miracles do you perform? Well, for one thing, I've uh, just finished sending Constable Winch to Hades. Hades? Oh, indeed. Of course, when I realised what had happened, I had him transferred to San Francisco, uh, wherever that is. Well, I'm sure he'll like San Francisco much better. Uh, I see you don't believe me. I can't say I blame you either. Well, after all, Mr. Dothering Ray. F Fotheringay? Well... Very well, there's nothing else to do but for me to up and perform a few miracles before we go any further. Well, that's, uh, that's very interesting, I'm sure. Well, now, now, you take that jar of tobacco there on the table, for instance. Now, suppose I just point my finger at it like this and become a bowl of violets. <laughs> well, that's very interesting. Ah, oh. see? A bowl of violets. Gorblot! <clears throat> I mean, uh, so it is. Of course, it ain't nothing very spectacular, your reverendship, but it's the sort of miracle a man can pass without tangling himself up in a mass of trouble. It's extraordinary. Very well, well uh, extraordinary. Uh, uh, you can see for yourself they're uh, real violets. Indeed. Uh, 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 indeed. Now, mm. uh, you take this for example. Oh. Um, become a bowl of fish. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 not that kind. Live fish in a goldfish bowl, swimming around. Now. <laughs> well, that's better. It's amazing. Uh, how did you do it? Just told it to. That's all? That's all. When I tells a thing to do it, it does it. It was incredible. Come on me sudden, like you might say. Um, well, I'd like to know if it's real, genuine miracles or if it ain't. Well, uh, uh... Well, we're seeing as how miracles ought to come under your reverendship's special province, more or less. Well, uh, yes, yes, indeed. Um, uh, however, usually in a somewhat more uh, academic fashion, uh, these are more, well, uh, more astonishing. Well, as far as I can tell, there ain't no limit to it. Like, for instance, uh, a, a bowl of fish turn into a pigeon. <laughs> Oh, good heavens. Oh, look at the thing, I say. Well, now, you know, none know. of that. You stay away from Mr. Maydig now. Well, perhaps I'd best uh, hey, hey, become that same uh, uh, jar of tobacco again. <laughs> well, Reverend, what do you think about it? It's amazing. It's the most extraordinary thing I've ever seen in my life. I ever expected to see you. I I've got to think about it and consider the possibilities. Well, I might come back in the morning. Oh, no, 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 I wouldn't hear of it. Um, look here, I was about to dine when you rang. I uh, wonder if you'd join me. Of course, I'm afraid there's only cold mutton. Well, now, uh, perhaps there's something else you might like uh, better. Oh, anything. Frankly, I've grown to hate the sight of them. But you don't mean that... But why not? Just name it. Um... <laughs> a pheasant. I haven't tasted a pheasant in years. Oh, then now is the time. Let there be a pheasant on the table. <laughs> no, 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 not, not like that. Let it be dead and roasted and ready to eat. <laughs> oh, look at it. Oh, it's beautiful. Mm, smells good, too. Perhaps we'd better... Uh, Yes. Let there be two pheasants. <laughs> and, uh, and, and truffles. And truffles. <laughs> uh, maybe some uh, oysters. Two dozen oysters. Oh, I love oysters. Uh, oh. yeah, we better make it three dozen. <laughs> oh, uh, and, and some cheddar. Oh, we must have some cheddar. Oh, yes. A pound of cheddar. <laughs> and now, what to drink, your reverendship? Uh, champagne? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I really shouldn't... <laughs> Well, perhaps a small bottle of Moselle. Six bottles of Moselle, oh. a keg of start, <laughs> and a case of champagne. <laughs> well, 
Well, there wasn't no mistake about it. I'd come to the right place for certain. Once Mr. Maydig got over his first astonishment, he turned out full of ideas for brand new miracles. Things I might never have thought of, like as not. Well, we polished off that meal in no time at all. And an hour later, we was out walking in the dark streets of the village, turning out miraculous jobs so fast I fairly wore out my finger appointing with it. I couldn't begin to tell you all the things we'd done there in a couple of hours, but, well, we installed a new railway line, we drained Flinders Swamp and turned it into a meadow, we cured the vicar's warts, paved all the roads, eliminated taxation, reformed the Lord Mayor and made all the girls in the village beautiful. Oh, these weren't any of your eightney miracles. All of these, these were big. And we went right on turning them out, one every two minutes, just as regular as clockwork. Well, by midnight we passed clean through the village and we were walking along the lane by Millsdale's Pond, fairly tired out by all of that thinking and pointing and performing of miracles. Uh, Mr. Fotheringay, I've just thought of another one. Oh, indeed. And what might it be? Uh, the village clock. Uh, listen to it now. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, that's true enough. It hasn't got a very melodious sound to it. Then let's give them a good clock. A great, rich, booming one, shall we? All right, Mr. Maydig. Uh, let that there clock become a genuine London-style cathedral clock. <laughs> Oh, that's much better. Much better. Oh, the people of this village are going to have a big surprise when they wake up in the morning. After all we've done for them tonight. Well, I might say that there's one or two things that we've done that I ain't so sure about, like uh, turning every drop of alcoholic beverage into plain water, for instance. Oh, well, there's nothing to worry about, Mr. Fotheringay. You can always turn out a miraculous pint or two for your own purposes, and, and, and it will reform all the drunkards in the village. Well, perhaps so. At any rate, we might as well wait and see what comes of it. Well, what do we perform next? Well, I really don't know. I can't think of another single miracle that we haven't already... Well, half a moment, Mr. Maydig. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes? I just thought of one of my own I'd better take care of. Oh? Yeah. Let Constable Winch be right back in San Francisco again. <laughs> See, he might be catching a boat or a train or something. You understand. I mean, I, I thought the best idea is just to keep sending him back there every once in a while. No, mm -hmm. oh, I doubt that you have anything to worry about. San Francisco is some distance away, you know. Uh, I, I, I keep trying to think of one more miracle. A big one. Something worthy of ending the night with, but I... Oh. Uh, well, no. Eh? I say... There is one, you know. Oh, such as? You see that moon, Mr. Fotheringay? Well, naturally. Nigh on to full by the looks of it. Remember Joshua? Joshua? Hey, Joshua? Oh, now, come off it now. <laughs> it would be a wondrous thing to see. Well, now, that's a pretty tall order, making the moon stand still. Oh, actually, it only appears to stand still. What really happens is that the, the Earth stops rotating. But well, I think we'd better not go monkeying around with the universe. Well, you probably don't have the power to do it anyway. It's really a superior class of miracle, you know. Oh, I've got the power, all right, but I'm not so sure it's a good idea. I could do it if I wanted to. Oh, oh, yes. Yes, of course you could. Well, perhaps we'd better get along home. Well, I don't know now. I, I might just leave it stop for a little while. If, if you could stop it at all. Oh, well, now, if that's the way you feel, you just take a look at this. Earth, the whole blinking world, stop rotating. <laughs> Here now, what's all this? I, I didn't order no wind. Fotheringay! What have you done? I don't rightly know. Look out, things are starting to blow loose. Oh, you confounded, blundering idiot. You... Hey, duck your head. Here comes the Lord Mayor's sheep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, duck yourself. Here comes the Lord Mayor. Yeah. Oh, you better lie down in the ditch before we get blown away. Oh, it's getting worse all the time. I can't seem to pull my wits together. Fotheringay. Oh, I got it. When the earth stopped rotating, everything on the surface kept right on moving. Five, six hundred miles an hour. Houses, cows, the wind, everything. It's a scientific principle. Well, a lot of good that does. Oh, 
Stop it, man! Do something! Do! Woo! Mr. Maydig! Wow, Mr. Maydig! Oh, blimey, if he ain't blown clean away! Gone! Oh, now I've got myself a fine, into a fine kettle of fish for certain. If, if only there weren't so much confusion, perhaps I could... Oh, now, that's it. It's, it's the only answer. All right, now. Let, let nothing happen until I say the word go. And when I do, let everything go back exactly like it was just before I turned that blooming lamp upside down to the Long Dragon Bar. And at the same time, let me lose this here miraculous power complete like. Just forget all about it. You got it now? Everything just as it were. No more miracles. Just let me forget the whole thing. All right then. You ready? Go! <laughs> It's only what you say. And the same as anybody else might say who's got the least bit of scientific knowledge inside of their thicker heads. Aren't I right, Constable Winch? Uh, couldn't rightly say, Mr. Fotheringay. The subject ain't exactly in my province, you know. <clears throat> Neither are the same, Miss Bridges. Right you are, Constable Winch. Irregardless, Mr. Beamish, miracles ain't possible. Uh, so you say. Perhaps you don't even know what a miracle is. Perhaps if I was to point my finger at that lamp there on the bar and tell it to turn upside down, I suppose you think it might do it. Well, I wouldn't say it wouldn't. You wouldn't say it wouldn't, Mr. Toddy Beamish. You haven't got a brain in your head. And I'm only wasting my time trying to enlighten you. There you are, Mrs. Miss Bridges. Thank you kindly, Mr. Fotheringay. I'll be dropping in again when the place ain't quite so crowded. And so I bid you all a respectful good a night. <laughs> well, Tuddy, I'd say you got the best of the argument tonight. Glory be, will you take a look at this? What's up, Miss Bridges? Sixpence. He left me sixpence right here on the bar, big as anything. And so he did. The like of it ain't never happened before. Saints preserve us if it ain't a downright blooming miracle. That's what it is, a downright blooming miracle. Under the direction of Norman MacDonald, Escape has brought you The Man Who Could Work Miracles by H.G. Wells, especially adapted for Escape by Les Crutchfield. Ben Wright was starred as George Fotheringay. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Lou Krugman, Eileen Erskine, and Wilms Herbert. The special music for Escape was composed and adapted by Del Castillo. Next week, Escape with us to the windswept peak of Mount Everest and the story of a man who sacrificed everything to climb it. As Leonard Lee tells it in his gripping story, Conquest. This is Roy Rowan speaking. This is CBS and the Columbia Broadcasting System.